What's happening, y'all? Today is day 161 on the calendar. And I want to just want to give you guys a quick meditative lesson about uh, what are you looking at? Once again, day 161 on the calendar. And quick meditative lesson is what are you looking at? You know, as we see the media across the country, and we are often struck by the images that are brought across the TV. If you're online, if you're on social media, people are posting all kinds of stuff about what the police are doing, what looters are doing. But let's bring it home a little closer. I want to ask you, what are you looking at? And today's meditative lesson comes from the 101st Psalm, verse 3. It says, I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. And we could go on, but I just want to lose verse 3 as a meditative point tonight. Very quickly, this is possibly the hardest thing for believers and new believers to consistently walk out. Why? Because the eye gate and the ear gate are number one and two, depending on what kind of lifestyle you live. That's what the enemy brings to you. He presents things to you so you can leave the path of righteousness. I'm going to say it again. I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. This is King David. And he's talking about uh, not only in his personal life, but he's also talking about what's going on in his court. And my question to you is, you have a court, and your court is called your life. And there are a lot of people that live uh, double lives. What you see on Facebook is not how they live. What you see on Instagram is not how they live. They post positive things. And then there are also people that literally, if you go through their timeline, if you go through their social media, if you go through their texts mess right now, they say one thing to one person and then they say something totally different to another. But what I've tried to do, especially over the last five to 10 years, is refuse to even entertain negative behavior. See, when you come out of a lifestyle that I had, you know, I was backslidden for, uh, what, almost 15 years, all right? So I know what it means to be living backward. I know what it means to live as a person who not only looked at uh, evil or looked at vile things, but also dibble dabble in it. And so it's very easy once you commit your life to God, once you repent and turn back to God, it's very easy to discern. It's very easy to distinguish between somebody who is real and somebody who is quote unquote fake in the funk. And it starts out with refusing to look at anything vile and vulgar. It starts out refusing to look at things that you know will cause you to come out of character. And a lot of people, once they figure out that they can't get you to come out of character, then they double down and they start going after your character. They start going after your integrity. And what you have to do is remind yourself is, listen, I'm a re I refuse to look at that. Yes, you can present it to me, but I don't have to dwell on it. Yes, uh, a good example is, you know, um, somebody, you know, sends you something or somebody says something about you. You don't have to constantly look at it. Yes, they sent it. Yes, they said it and move forward. And this happens a lot in ministry for people who are committed their lives to Christ. People will send you dirty pictures, dirty jokes, uh, they send you vulgar images, especially through social media, but you don't have to look at it. And even stronger than that, when people go after you in your personal life, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you may not like it. Everybody's not going to enjoy someone who is committed to God. Matter of fact, a lot of people want to be wishy-washy. They want to uh, be lukewarm. And as an entrepreneur, speaking from firsthand example, when you don't behave a certain way, they go after your walk with God. And that's fine. You can attack those areas. That's okay. 
because you have to know who you are in Christ, who you are in the most high God and move forward. You have to what? Hate all who deal crookedly. Right. You you have to make that decision. And let me tell you, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're bivocational, you know, if you have a job and you're a minister or you're a job, you have a job or you have 100 uh, percent, quote unquote, self-sufficient, meaning that God takes care of you through your own business. The moment you do something that people don't like, they're going to call you everything in the book. But you have to stand straight, humble yourself and refuse to deal crookedly. That doesn't mean become a pushover. That doesn't mean that. What it means is you refuse to be vile. You refuse to put your mouth on people and you refuse to deal crookedly. And guess what? Then here's the, here's the, here's the, the final blow. I will have nothing to do with them. A hard thing in life is to cut people off. I'm going to say it again. One of the hardest things in life is to cut people off. But guess what? You're not cutting them off because of what you did. You're cutting them off because of what they are doing. So once again, day 161 on the calendar, I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. You make sure you stay right. If you are wrong, ask for forgiveness, move forward. If you are right, humble yourself, seek God's face and refuse to deal with those individuals who have a tendency to be vile, to be vulgar, to be violent, to be malicious. And then you have to hate the behavior. You love people, hate the behavior and have nothing to do with them. Day 161, what are you looking at? God bless you. Peace.